as. Uh, hi. Can you all hear me well? Yeah, good. Okay. So, as as Daniel said, my my name is Nikolai. I work for Automatic. I have a small website at techshoplay.me, and you can find me as Nikolai B on Twitter. Uh, as a lot of you my my have all my have already heard, uh, there is a huge buzz around the. Uh, the forthcoming REST API in WordPress. And uh, uh, there are ma ma many projects using a REST, a REST API in one way or another, like uh, uh, Calypso, or many other people are already building stuff with, with the REST API. And the most common use case for, uh, for, for the REST API is, is building single page applications. These are JavaScript-based applications running mostly in the browser uh, as a front-end and using something li like the REST API as a back-end. So before we, we go even, even deeper, first, uh, why, why, why would we even want to use single-page applications? Because uh, they uh, seem la la like a totally different way of uh, building web web apps. Uh, uh, they seem a bit different from WordPress itself, uh, and most of the people here ha have been building things in WordPress. Why why do we need to change even something? Oh, th there are two main reasons, and one of them is that single page applications can be a lot faster, especially in cases where the user stay, stays on our website a lot longer because we don't have to reload everything on, on, on every single click. Uh, it makes them often at least feel so, so much faster than uh, uh, traditional web, web applications. And also, ju just because all of the transitions can be a lot, a lot quicker, and, and that everything lives in the, in the browser, we have a lot more flexibility. This, this means that single page applications can be a lot more engaging too. Because we, we can do so much stuff with the user when, when, when we're liberated from, from the constant request to the uh, server. And it, it was pretty obvious when, when, when we launched Calypso, which is the new WordPress.com uh, fr front end, that it just felt so much, so much faster, and we could do a lot more things on the front end. And you can, if you want, you can just go to WordPress.com and, and test it out or not. It's fine. Uh, so now that, that, that we know why would we want to build a single pay page applications, I would just I would just like to uh, take a step back qu quickly and talk about something else. I would like to talk about change. So e if we know one thing about people is that they hate change. They hate things ch changing in front of them, uh, themselves. And also people are not incredibly good at following changing state, as, as you might see. And, and as you might have seen on the, on the streets. Just for our nature, it is very hard to, to follow what, what is going on. We are much, much better suited at a, for a slower pace of, pace of life w where things almost do not change. It is just an evolution thing. We, uh, we very, very much prefer s sitting and observing. And actually, Change is exactly the difference between classic web, web applications and single page web, web app applications. Uh, in a classic web app, let's take the WordPress admin. Every time you change something, let's say you want to add a title and you, you write some content, you make your change, and then you press publish. So every time you make a change, the whole page, uh, the whole page re reloads. We just trash everything we, we have and we start fresh. 
which also historically has been very, very common. Instead of change something, let's do a revolution and change everything. And this is how classic web applications work. And this is actually pretty, pretty convenient. Uh, however, in single pay page applications, we don't start from scratch at every single request. Instead, uh, we have to just apply a small number of changes to the UI. We, ha we have to go for some more data to the server, come back, and then change only this small bit that changed. So it very often leads to huge amounts of complexity. It just, it's mind-blowing, and, and, and things ver very, very quickly become a lot more complicated. And this is why, uh, if you have done more, a little bit more complicated things with, with uh, uh, jQuery in the, in the browser, it very quickly becomes this huge mess of callbacks, updates to the UI, fetches. Uh, and it is just hard, because it is our nature to not be able to easily follow and, and to deal with change. And here comes R React. Uh, so React com comes from Facebook, and it is a small UI open source library. React is not a framework unlike uh, Angular or Ember. It is just a UI library. It just deals with the changes in our UI, in our HTML inside the browser. Uh, now we're going to show a little bit of code. It's not too, too, too complicated, so do not be scared if, even if you are not an incredibly serious developer. It, it's all fine. Uh, the core part of, of React are so-called components. And, and each com component is something actually pretty simple. The, the main thing in the component is a, is a single method called render. Its only goal is to return the markup for uh, this component, the, the HTML. As, as you might see, this HTML here doesn't really look a lot like JavaScript, and you'll be right. Uh, this is, is actually something called J JSX, which is an extension, again, come, comes from Facebook, and it allows us to write tags instead of some weird function calls and objects. And it makes it so much easier to work with, uh, with uh, designers and people who just know HTML, like all of us, probably. Uh, internally, all of this is actually translated to, to, very, to, to plain and simple JavaScript objects. And, and then it is executed by the uh, uh, browser. Something really cool about com components is that they can be nested. Le let's say we have a post com component, and inside we, we want to have a post meta. Right? Uh, and this is not magic. Po post meta is uh, just a variable which leads to another React com component. It's nothing more. So our so our custom components work at the same level as, as the HTML elements, and, and we can nest and mix them as much as we want. We, we can also pass our arguments to components, which, we, which in JSX look, look like HTML attributes, and they're called props. Uh, and all of the props can, can be accessed inside of the component in this dot props. It's pretty simple. Sometimes a component need, needs to access that data which does not come from uh, the outside, but it sometimes wants to keep its own state. For example, le let's say we have the post meta, and it, and it can be hidden or, or it can be shown. So it, so it makes a lot more sense to keep uh, whether it's, it's hidden, not, not in props, but, but somewhere deep inside as, a, as something called state. Uh, and when, if we want to change something in our component, let's say we want to, to have a button which shows and hides the post-meta meta, uh, bits, we can use something called 
this set state. Uh, and we can change the internal state. And here comes probably the most interesting bit of uh, React is that we don't need to actually change the UI ourselves. The moment we change the, the data, React is smart enough to re-render the, the HTML itself. So we don't have to do absolutely anything. And, and this, to be honest, is, is what, what, what was the main reason we started using React, because it makes all of those interactions so, so much sim simpler for the uh, developer. I'm sure a lot of you have, have uh, used jQuery style UIs where if a button is clicked, when, when you uh, click a button, you need to check the current state and sometimes show a certain piece, piece sometimes hide a certain piece. And especially in cases where you, you have more than one thing to show and hide, it almost always leads to some inconsistencies we, which are very, very hard to uh, debug. So I showed you the main things about com components. I want to go a little bit de deeper about why components can be really cool. The first reason you kind of already saw is that components are composable. We can nest them incredibly easy and as deep as we want. We can have a master bar, and then inside we have a user greeting, inside we have an avatar, inside we have some text, inside we have some logout link. Uh, we don't need any boilerplate, everything, every com component is a first class citizen, and it doesn't matter if it comes from the, from the browser, like, uh, like a paragraph, or a span, or a div, or it comes from, from one of our colleagues who wrote an, a logout link component. And exactly for uh, this reason, components make it really easy to see our to see the building blocks of an application. You usually, w when you uh, view the source of, of a typical web, 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 web page, you see a lot of divs with a lot of classes, and you don't always know what, those, what exactly do those mean. And, and with React, it, it is really easy to see the uh, structure of our applications because Again, all of, all of the boilerplate is very well hidden behind those components. Mm. See, you can, you can have a master bar, then you, you can have a masthead, then you can have a navigation, which can, and any, and any one of those can mean whatever you want. It, it, can, it can have as much HTML or JavaScript as you want. Uh, and of course, inside you can have just plain paragraphs and text. Something incredibly cool is uh, there is a Chrome and I think a Firefox e extension too, which lets you actually explore on a, on a living web page in your browser the uh, React components. And actually, this is from WordPress.com, I think. Yeah, this is from uh, Calypso, where it's so much easier to see, oh, here is a post component, which has the site ID. Here, here is what kind of posts it is, it is showing. Uh, here is who is the author, it is showing images, and then here is a list of, of all of the posts inside an infinite list. So if you're a, a developer, if you want to do an infinite list, you just put, put, put everything inside a, an infinite list component, you just tell it how to fetch nuance, and that's about it. And all of those lo look exactly like HTML. Another great uh, advantage of using components is that since they're very well isolated, uh, they're so much easier to test. And by testing, I mostly mean no automated unit testing or integration testing, whatever. Uh, I'm kind of interested in security stuff some, sometimes, so it is very useful that components really help with, and, and React itself, uh, they really help with, with XSS problems, which are by far the most, most common vulnerability on, on the web these days. Uh, anytime you have, anytime you pass any data to props or to state, uh, 
and use it inside a J J JSX, it is automatically basically escaped uh, because React assumes you, you pass text. Of course, you sometimes want to pass real HTML. Let's say you, wanna, you, wanna, you need some markdown stuff or, or some HTML is coming from the database. And React is pretty fle flexible and it lets you do this. However, you need to do it like this. You need to, you need to pass the actual, the raw HTML as a prop code dangerously set in our HTML, which will probably remind you that if you really do not know what, what, what you're doing, it may be slightly dangerous. Um, so but this has been really, really useful. No, no XSS. Um, another cool thing about components is that they're not templates. It's not, they're not using some underpowered, weird templating language. They're using plain JavaScript. We can write loops, we can write if clauses, uh, and it's so just JavaScript. We don't have to learn too much. Uh, and a lot of designers these days already know a little bit of JavaScript and PHP anyway. Uh, also, we don't, also, we can use all of our functions or libraries directly there. We don't have to import them in weird ways. Components are also incredibly easily reusable. Uh, let's say we have a comment, and in comments we have avatars, right? Uh, let's say we uh, build an, an avatar com component where we pass the email, and it builds the, all, all of the gravatar stuff. We can incredibly easily reuse the, exactly the same avatar component so, somewhere else. Let's say we, we, we can have it in, in the comments, we can have it in the post meta to, to use the, the author email. And we don't have to write the whole boilerplate with MD5 of, of the email where we always for, forget to convert the email to lowercase and sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, also, let, let's say we want the avatar to, to do some, something special on hover. I guess you, you've, you've seen those where it shows your, let's say, your Gravatar profile or your website pro, pro, profile. So if we were using the, the, the same avatar component everywhere else, it would be really easy to just change it in one place and voila, we have this hover functionality everywhere else on the website. Because every component includes both the markup, both the HTML, and the, and the JavaScript needed for all of the, usually it, it is mostly the JavaScript needed for all of the, the event handlers, and sometimes doing some re requests or stuff like this. And it's very handy that, that a component in includes both, because they're in one place. Except that for many, many years, people have been te telling us that we should be keeping our logic and our markup separate, right? And we all know that, that uh, separation of concerns is good. However, I have a few questions. First, uh, how often do we do we uh, how often do we need an event handler, and how often do we use it without the HTML it is attached to? Or, how often do we do we need a DOM element without any of the event handlers? And to be honest, the answer is almost never. Uh, so HTML and the display logic are actually the same concern. However, for most people, the problem is that JavaScript and HTML are different technologies. And this is why there is this urge to separate them. But we are not separating technologies here. We are, because HTML and display logic, again, are exactly the same con concern. 
one of them does, doesn't really mean much without the other. Because why, why do we care about a button if we don't know what it does? So they're just the same concern and they belong together. And from my experience, this works incredibly well. Okay, I think I sold you a lot on components. However, we haven't mentioned some, something. We haven't mentioned the elephant in the room. It is the whole re-rendering magic. And it's actually really li 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 like magic. You change some a data here and your UI updates automatically. We, ha we have done this before or we have tried to do something like this with the backbone and it had few, few problems. First, everything was moving around because every time we threw away the whole com component. But usually the biggest problem is that and that most people think it is just incredibly slow. Because on every small change, if we get rid of everything and try it again, it will be something like the classic web applications just do, doing this very, very often. However, it, tu it turns out that, that in practice, it is very fast. <laughs> just the moment you, you change something, the UI updates automatically, no, 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 no weird resizings, and just very fast. And, and the reason it is very fast is something called a virtual DOM. Uh, so instead of removing everything and recreating the whole component, virtual DOM makes things a lot smarter. So every time we want to make a change, so every, uh, the, the component that, that is affected First, we call its render me method, which we saw before. And the render method usually doesn't do much. It just returns a bunch of markup. And ideally, a render method will, be, will do only this. It will be fast because it's called very often, it, and it will not have any side effects. Render methods do not do, not do uh, requests or stuff like this. Then, render returns, as you saw, a, a, a tree of, of JavaScript objects. Then React keeps the previous version of this component and it makes a diff. It calculates the difference between those two trees and sees, oh, is there any change? And if there isn't any change, it just that, that doesn't do anything. But let's say it's so, oh, they added a new diff tag here. So then, when, when it has all of the changes, React computes the minimum set of DOM changes it needs to do to, uh, to take the page from the, from the uh, previous UI state to the next one, uh, to take it from the uh, previous version of the, uh, of the HTML to the next one. And there are some pretty smart algorithms which, which lets us uh, combine changes, for example, instead of adding a million li items one by one, it says, oh, I'll just add them together. Also, it batches fewer uh, dates which, which have been done very close to each other. Uh, let's say first you, uh, click some, you click something and it needs to both uh, Add, add a few list items, but also update a, a counter some, somewhere up, up in the header, React will probably wait a bit, and on the next, uh, on the next re uh, drawing frame of the browser, it will just do them together, and it makes it so much faster. The virtual DOM, ha ha however, is not only useful for, for, for faster speed, because we are not dealing with, uh, with the browser DOM anymore and we have our own structure, we can do a lot of really, really cool things. For example, we can, have, we can just render these pages on the server. Uh, we're actually experimenting with this in Calypso for some logged out pages. And it can be really fast because first you serve 
the you you render the page on the on the server. Uh, you serve it to the to the client, and then React pick, picks up all of the changes. So you don't have this massive amount of waiting in the on the first load. We can also use this virtual DOM to. <clears throat> uh, to render things not only in HTML but in SVG, VML, we can we can use a canvas. If we want to build uh, a, a, an avatar component and we want to add a mustache props or a mustache option, we can we can very easily do it still within the virtual DOM, but use a canvas, and it can and it can still look look like a normal uh, HTML component. Also, uh, we, we can run things in a web worker. Uh, this is a new thing in browsers where it, it can run things in, in parallel. So we, we, we can just render something, or, or we can run the diffing algorithms, which are, which are sometimes complicated. We can just run, run them in a, in a web, work, in a web wor worker. I told you a lot about com components, but probably my favorite and last thing I promise is that they're very declarative. Instead of telling it what to do, we just say, here is the HTML we expect. It's like, imagine in, instead of following a recipe or instead of give, giving, our, uh, instead of uh, reading a recipe and following it, imagine that you can just lay out all of the ingredients on the, on the, on the, on the table, then you show somebody the end result, and magic, you get the cupcakes. Uh, and React is actually something, something very, very sim sim similar. You just explain, here is the HTML I want. And, and it depends on, on some state. And every time the state cha changes, React makes sure we get exactly what, what we asked for. And as an added benefit, uh, this is the final version uh, of the HTML. There is no chance that some jQuery bit in the, in the far corner of our application will change our prop, will change our HTML in an unexpected way. And this makes it really declarative, very easy to read, and very predictable. Of course, it's no all great because React is just a UI layer. It doesn't have, unlike Angular or Ember, it doesn't have a router or a state or things like, like this. Uh, it's just not, not a framework. But, but there, are a lot, there is a huge community around it. You may want to try something like Redux, which gives you state. You may want to try React Router, which gives you a router, and they're pretty cool. <coughs> uh, also, on, on Egghead.io, there are some really great tutorials, video, very often by, by the authors of those tools. Uh, and of course, React probably requires a little bit more of architectural thought, which you may or you may not want. But, but the general principle is often more interesting than, than the tool itself. I wouldn't be surprised if something like React is like browser's work in a few years now. We have been using it really extensively uh, at Automatic for our Calypso project. And it's all open, open source, so you can go check it out. Uh, and if this, if this is interesting to you, just find me after that, and we can chat about it. Just a few more seconds, final summary. Um, yeah, the, the, if, if you want to re remember j just a few small things, First, we use components. We don't use templates. And they have all, all of the JavaScript together with them. Instead of rendering and changing things ourselves, we let React render stuff. And the virtual DOM is simple, fast, and really fun. One last thing. Uh, it would be great if you can come to tomorrow at the contributor day. First, we, we can have more time to uh, chat about th things like this. Uh, and in my ex ex experience, contributor days have been enormous amount of fun, and, and everybody learns something. And I heard, have you ever had a contributor day be before? Uh, not really. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can make hi history and be part of the first real contributor day in Finland.
And this was everything for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai. Uh, any questions for Nikolai? No questions about React? One in front. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Uh, just had a question on uh, React and the WordPress admin. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think uh, that'll happen? Why and when, if that case? Um, there aren't any plans. Uh, but probably the way WordPress works is that very often plugins lead the way. And I know of a few plugins who are working on a React-based uh, admin inter interfaces. So, uh, so we'll see first how it, how it goes, what are the challenges, uh, is, it, is, is it even worth it? Because Calypso is pretty cool, but it's different from WP Admin. Uh, also, it's also Calypso itself is in is in its earlier stages. It's probably not as as mature as WP Admin. For example, it doesn't have plugin support. Uh, so there is a lot more thought to be put in what a new version of the of wp admin might uh, look like and also we don't really need to do this like it's perfectly fine if we have alternate backends for or or alternate admin in inter interfaces for uh very specific needs and still keep all of the plugins working but in short i don't know we'll see i guess that's one of the biggest challenges with big challenges with the um REST API that, like keeping that low barrier of entry with plugins, but then also having that sort of um, the well building like advanced UIs with React. Yes. Um, or, or another technology. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see a lot more projects using the REST API and and some Java JavaScript front ends and. I, and I'm sure there will be a lot of projects which will make it easier. Because now, for, especially for uh, many people, for many de developers, it's something totally new. And it's a new language, it's a new paradigm, as you saw the whole change thing. Uh, so it will ta take some time first to make sure th this is the right thing for the community and for people to get great at it. Okay, more questions? Over there. Okay. Oh. Just a few seconds. I can see one there. Oh. Well, there's one over there. Okay. Okay. Um, well, what kind of challenges have you faced with uh, styling the React components? Do you favor uh, inline CSS or style sheets, or uh, at least that's something uh, I'm struggling with? With uh, styling. So yeah, styling. with uh, uh, styling. Well, um, so the biggest problem with styling and components, and especially with, with uh, reusing com components, is that very often styles leak uh, because of cascading. And the way we have solved this problem is that we almost do not use cascading. We use something called, uh, what was it called, BM, I, th I think, where uh, each class is prefixed with the component name. So basically, each, each CSS class is limited inside the component. Uh, and for Calypso, for example, we're using SAS, which, which makes it a lot easier to import some global styles when you need them. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that helped us scale this is that we keep the styles right next to each component so that both markup, JavaScript, and CSS live together. And to be honest, it, it has been working really, really well. Designers are really happy, and CSS is much better structured this way. So, so today, I would probably do something like this, not only in a single page application, but in whatever application, to rely less on cascading and on, uh, and on reusing styles. Okay, Did that was this answer your question? There was a question near the bar. Yeah. 
How is the browser support in uh, React these days, and what kind of problems is there with the browser support? So browser support, I'm pretty sure React works on i7. I'm not sure about 6, but I really hope nobody cares about it anymore. Uh, to be honest, we do not support, like with, uh, with Calypso, we do not support i7 and 8 anymore, I think. Uh, but I'm pretty sure React works on i on i8 at least. Any questions upstairs? No. Okay, downstairs. Right. Uh, you meant you mentioned the Calypso, so, so you meant the WordPress.com admin interface or the, uh, the software built on that. Were you involved in that project? And what was the main difficulties in that? Uh, I was a little bit involved in the Calypso project, uh, not too much. Um, probably the biggest challenge was dealing with uh, state and the components itself were pretty self-contained from the beginning, but, but making sure the, the right data comes to them and how, and every time the data changes to re-render the, the components. And in the past two years, we have, we have gone through two or three different approaches, which you can all see in the current code base. Um, and in general, probably the biggest challenge was gaining a deeper understanding of how all of those technologies work and making sure we make the right design decisions, uh, which probably wouldn't have happened with something like Angular or Ember. However, uh, this way, we have been a lot more flexible and we have a lot more control over what is going on. Also, uh, it took Angular and Ember a long time to, to catch up with, with this way of, of working. Only in their most recent versions, they have this automatic re-rendering thing. Uh, and, and, and we used this style starting more than two, two, two years ago. It has been incredibly helpful in the developer experience. So, we, so we, this is the uh, uh, trade-off. We had to learn more, we had to change some, some approaches, but we had more, more control to always use the best approach. Okay, one more question. Come on. Hmm. Don't be shy. I have a question if there's no other question. Um, have you experimented with using React like on the server side so by like delivering the first page load? Uh, yes, from the um, it's still not in production, I think, but, but you can find a few pull requests on the, on the React repository, uh, sorry, on the, on the Calypso repository. We have a few logged out pages and there uh, it's important for SEO stuff. It's the new theme browser for WordPress.com. And it's almost done. Uh, it, requires, it required a little bit of re-architecting of some bits, uh, but, but, it, but it works. Uh, and it's also pretty, pretty fast. Because you get all, 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 all of the HTML, and then React is smart enough to just, to just con continue and pass in this HTML some IDs and stuff. Uh, and then it can, it can totally trans transparently for the uh, developer, it hooks to the, to the right places and it continues from, from this point as, as if it was, it was rendered in the browser. Cool. Okay, thank you very much, Nikolai. Um, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs>